when the weather starts turning a little chilly outside, my mind turns to the two favorite things I love. One is baking and the other is dining in with a good book. I have pulled out a few books that either have food themes or recipes in them that you can try at home. These are just a few, so you have to come in and discover for yourself the other ones that we already have on the shelves waiting for you to check out. Who would have thought a bake sale could be so dangerous and result in murder? Well, in the Bake Sale Murder by Leslie Meyer, you will find out how interesting a bake sale can be and how dangerous sometimes. Uh, in this book in the back, you will find several recipes that are bake sale favorites, one of which is the kitchen sink cookies that have literally everything in them but the kitchen sink. A food and book discussion would not be complete without including a book by Joanne Luke. Her heroine, uh, who is a caterer, Hannah Swenson, is always getting herself in a lot of trouble um, in addition to the wonderful things she bakes in her books. She's often running for her life until the very end. In her books, and I pulled out a couple, the Christmas Cupcake Murder and the Coconut Layer Cake Murder Mystery. Uh, she has sprinkled recipes throughout that are delightful and wonderful and worth your time to bake. Another book I found on our shelves here at the Athenaeum was a delightful discovery. The name of it is An Island Apart by Stephen Reichlin. He is an author but in addition, he is also a celebrity chef and has produced and written many cookbooks. In this book, the main character, a woman, comes to uh, Chappaquiddick and she is like house sitting for the summer. She strikes up um, an interesting relationship with the person that they call the hermit of Chappaquiddick. At first, it starts out through like uh, exchanges of letters. And what's most interesting with this is that it's not just simple uh, notes written to each other, but they exchange food back and forth. And then that's how they develop their relationship. So uh, one of the things they exchanged was nut bread. So I have a nut bread here to represent that book. In Scones and Bones by Laura Child, Theodosia Browning, the owner of the Indigo Tea Shop, finds herself at a food and wine festival in Charleston. There was more there than she expected because she finds herself embroiled in a murder mystery there in Charleston. Uh, she includes in the back of her book some of her favorite tea and pastry recipes that she serves at the Indigo Tea Shop. And one of them most notably and is quite delicious is the lemon scones. I would recommend you giving that a try. In the Apple Orchard by Susan Wiggs, Tess finds a family and a place to belong. Throughout this book, you will find a multitude of apple recipes as well as other things that they serve at the farm. So to represent this book, I prepared apple chutney, which is a recipe you can find in this book. If you've read any of Louise Penny's books, then you know they are filled with good friends, good food, and a little murder along the way. In her new book, all the devils are here. You will find Chief Inspector Gamache in Paris, thinking he is on vacation. But as we all know, murder always has a way of finding him. Bon appetit!